Hello and welcome back to the Alchemical Arts. Today's pigment experiments will be the first of a series on working with cobalt based compounds, mainly that of cobalt blue, potentially some cobalt violets, and there is also cobalt yellows and greens as well. Hope you enjoy the series, and without further ado, let's get stuck into some work. So for these first two little batches of cobalt blue that I'm going to make here, I'm basically just going to work with cobalt chloride, which we have here is the little pink salt, and aluminium hydroxide, which is the white powder here, and the idea will be we'll add a tiny bit of water and mix these into a paste, and then we will take that paste and we'll place it into our crucible here, we'll dry it, and then we'll calcine it. Now I've got two lots of mixtures here which both have the same amount of cobalt, but we've got differing amounts of aluminium, so I want to see if there's a difference in the ratios and the final outcome of the blue. Just a tiny bit of water, which as you can see it wants to dissolve quite rapidly. Just want to get the last of everything mixed in. So yeah, for a Turkish green or a Turkish blue, which is a cobalt chromium sort of mixture, which is probably one of my favourite blue-green colours, which I'm really hoping this works out nicely. For that, I'm going to put one and a half grams of cobalt carbonate, one and a half grams of chromium oxide, and three grams of the aluminium hydroxide into our mortar and pestle here and we'll just aim to evenly homogenize the mixture. So after a decent amount of mixing in the mortar and pestle we have sort of a grayish green powder resulting which I'm just going to load into the crucible here. So here we have our cobalt mixtures in the little crucibles here and I'm just about to load them into forge here which as you can see I need to get rid of the chickens because well we don't want them near that this old forge here was acquired at some point by my dad and I just sort of inherited it and I think it's from the early 1910s or sometime around then um, but it still seems to work pretty well so I've made up some just some little pieces of kiln shelf here which I'll use as lids because one of the important factors here is to make sure that uh, none of the fire gases get into all the chickens it's important to make sure that none of the fire gases get into the pigments because they can damage the this isn't going to work So anyway, let's load up the forge and get this going. So everything's loaded in to the forge there. Now the aim will be close it all up, get the fire going, temperature gauge here so the aim will be to try and bring it up to about maybe 700 between 600 and 800 degrees celsius for about 30 to 45 minutes all right time to light the forge make sure you've always got fire extinguisher handy on the forge there's quite a lot of flames coming out which I'm not super happy about I think I need to set up a better area for doing this um, but so far so good um, we're at 120 degrees inside the forge there so I have to push on for a little bit longer 
So, after the failures of yesterday, with the forge not getting hot enough, this is what I ended up with, which none of these are of any particular value whatsoever. So, I brought in a different forge burner, right, which is, this is my burner that I have for blacksmithing, and I'm hoping that it will be able to get things hot enough, quickly enough, with minimal gas interruptions. Um, so some of this discoloration could have been because the other burner was having too much um, fumes and stuff getting into the forge there, so I'm hoping that this should be reduced. If this doesn't work, then all these mixtures will probably have to be discarded and I'll have to make new ones. Currently, we're already at 445 and rising. Things are getting quite hot in there. That's good. So we're on take two of the test and as you can see we're at 906 degrees in there. It's very hot. up to have a look at it. So it looks like in there at the moment. It's gonna run it for a little bit longer. Coming up on the thousand degree mark. I think that's about where we're going to shut it off. Boringly hot in Better I don't do this with gloves because if the gloves overheat, then I won't know that my hand is about to burn. Whereas if my hand is too hot, and there we have it, just a cruisy thousand degrees in there. Crucibles are very hot. In here, the blue is molten in color. I think I'm supposed to rapidly cool it at this point, but I'm not sure. So, so this is pigment here that's just come out. very blue. So after a few runs through the furnace and some failures and some successes, this is the array of various sort of cobalt pigments that I ended up with. Um, over here we'll talk about the successful ones. So in the end this was probably the most successful of the pigments, which you can see here is a dark, brilliant, sort of, quite an enchanting blue. It's ultramarine in, in hue, sort of, or in esque, but it has sort of a different quality to it. It's less violety, less purpley, and maybe tinges more to the green side of things.
In terms of composition, this one had a half gram cobalt chloride to a two and a half gram aluminium hydroxide. So a fairly high cobalt to aluminium ratio. If we look here at the one that I did side by side to it, which had the half gram cobalt but to five grams aluminium, it ends up being quite well, a fair bit lighter and a sort of softer, almost purpley sky blue. And this little third one here, it's hard to tell the difference between these two on camera, but this one again was a half gram mixed with two and a half grams of aluminium oxide, but also an additional half gram of zinc oxide to see if I could tinge it to the green spectrum. It didn't do that, but it did make the blue a little bit sort of brighter and poppier, but less depth. Um, now over on this side, these are all the various failures. So these ones here that look quite sort of washed out sort of colors, these three, these were ones where I suspect that from the first forge burner I was using the gas the fire gases got in and damaged the pigments and sort of irreversibly ruined them. These, however, on the other hand, here, this one was the first chromium cobalt mixture that I put through in the attempt to make the cobalt chrome oxide. Um, again, I think the fire gases had an impact on destroying this color, but I ended up with a very strange color nonetheless. It's kind of a blue-green, slaty, gray, olivey kind of color. It's very hard to describe. Depending on which way I look at it, I get different sort of effects, which I kind of like and I think I could find a use for. And then this was the second cobalt chromium attempt, um, which I didn't let the fire gases get into, but in the end it just produced this sort of like, I guess you'd call this maybe like a sap green or a, a, a sort of foresty, olivey kind of khaki green. Anyway, it's still kind of a nice colour, but it's not what I was after. So I did a little bit of swatch testing here, just with some oil. So this one on the end here is our dark, most successful pigment, which gives me a very deep blue in oils that I can gradate through to light sky blues. This one here, which is this one, which looks quite a bit lighter if you compare it to the pigment here. When mixed with oils, it's not that much lighter in color, but it does have less covering power. This one here was the other mixture with a tiny bit of zinc, which you can see is similar to the first one. Not as deep, but certainly quite a poppy blue. And these are the other ones here, which I just did for interest. All in all, happy with the results so far, barring now I know the importance of this kind of detriment that the fire gases can get in and the success of the other forge burner at maintaining temperatures. Yeah, there's a lot more I can do with this cobalt series and I think I'll keep refining it and working on getting these sort of turquoises and these greens better. And I think I've kind of got a process down now for getting these darker deep blues. Let us know what you think in the comments section. At this stage of the channel, all feedback on either how the channel's going or any kind of improvements to my pigment making process or any colors you would like to see, please let me know down below.